Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get to some painting today. I'm going to start out with my flat wash brush. I have two flat wash brushes that I'll be using today. They're exactly the same, same size. I'll be switching back and forth as we go along here between them. As you're painting along, you're going to want to have your palette, your two brushes, a cup of water, as well as your canvas and a nice space to work in, preferably with some good light. Today I'm going to start with some titanium white and a bit of the cobalt blue mixed in. You can see that I'm using more white than blue. We're going to add more white to the left hand side here and a little less of the white on the right hand side at the top corners of this canvas. We will eventually connect this all the way across, this nice light blue sky. Some more white as we get closer down to the horizon line for this lovely beach sunrise scene. The canvas that I'm using today is somewhat of an unusual size. It is a 6 by 18 inch canvas. 6 by 18 inches is a 3 to 1 ratio, nice panoramic ratio. It's wonderful for scenes like these, beach scenes particularly, landscapes particularly, and panoramic always look rather striking. I'm delighted that I was able to find some at my local art supply store in this somewhat unusual size, again 6 by 18 inches. If you don't have access to 6 by 18 inch canvases, then perhaps you could try using something like a 12 by 24 inch canvas. I think those are slightly more common. And if you can find one of those, they would work really well. That's a 2 to 1 ratio. Again, 12 by 24 inches. It looks rather nice when it's finished. Okay, we're going to mix together some titanium white, a little bit of the cobalt blue, and some Mars black. Just a touch of the black there. We want a nice light bluish gray mixture, not a lot of the black. We don't need a lot, it's a very powerful color. More blue. Fairly dark blue. Add a little more white to that, lighten that up. We want a color that is darker and more gray than the sky above. And there are some marine layer foggy clouds here, way out in the distance that have to roll in. Perhaps a brooding storm out there. And we can just see them, the front edge of this cloud bank. So let's put those in right now, shall we? We want this bank of clouds to be fairly straight. Closer to the left here, I'm going to add more white. Getting closer to where the sun is rising, it's going to lighten slightly. The whole thing will be darker on the right hand side, of course, because that is farther from the rising sun. A little more white today. And we're just going to fill in a few spots up here. A touch of the yellow. I recommend that you start with a fresh, clean brush. I have a touch of the blue on there, turning a tad green, and we don't want that. Fresh brush, here we go. Titanium white, and a little bit, a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium. Mix that together, more white than yellow. Nice, very light, creamy yellow. And we'll start to bring this in. Cover up that green spot I put there. It's like it never happened. Lots of yellow. You can see that I left some white of the canvas showing here so I'd have room for the yellow. If I had taken that sky all the way down to the marine layer clouds, then it would have turned a little more green. And we don't want green, we want blue and yellow. Now I'm going to take some pure white with a clean brush and just soften the edge of this transition from blue to white to yellow. Just make that ever so more subtle. Again, 
again, we don't want it to turn in green. So if it's turning green, wait a little longer before you go back over the blue. If you take a hair dryer, you can speed up the process of the blue drying, and that will ensure that you don't blend the two together. Okay, back to my mixture of the blue and the white. There should be a little more blue on this side. You can see I'm doing repetitive downward brush strokes, slightly swirling left to right. Okay, here is a darker mixture, the gray mixture, titanium white, Mars black, and cobalt blue. Get a nice darker color than the marine layer, grayish blue color. This is going to be the farthest waves from us, the actual ocean itself here. Now, the most important part of this is making this as straight as you possibly can. Does it need to be perfect? No. Does it need to be straight? Yes. So as straight as you can, create this layer. It doesn't matter what happens down below. You can see I don't care. It's the top edge that I'm worried about. Trying to make that as straight as possible. Left to right, pressing firmly. A little more paint on my brush. Extending this straight across. And we'll go back and adjust things up and down a little bit. Very, very dark color in the back. You can see that's becoming lighter in a few spots, and that's because some of the paint is blending with the cloud color above. Acrylic paint that I'm using today dries very quickly. You shouldn't have to worry about the colors over blending with each other too much, but because I'm working fast, some of them are still wet as I'm working down my canvas. Lighter cloud color has gotten onto my brush, and so it's a little bit lighter as we move forward, but that's okay. Really scrubbing it in here. Not a lot of paint on my brush. A lot of the lightness of that color is coming from the canvas showing through. Back into my titanium white and cobalt blue mixture, clean brush. Between each color application, I recommend that you dip your brush into a cup of water, swirl it around, and then take a paper towel and really pull off any excess paint off of those bristles. You really want them to be clean so that you're not having color mixing happening on your brush unless you want it to. There are a few spots here where the canvas is showing through, so we're just going to go back here with some white and some light blue and cover that up. Bit more of the white here. That looks about right. Okay, new mixture. Titanium white, of course. We want some cobalt blue and some nanthal crimson. Make a nice purple with the blue and the red, and the white is going to lighten it up to a nice lavender color. We have some billowing clouds that are catching some of the morning hues. Some beautiful purples and pinks happening above that marine layer. I could actually just leave the background sky as it is at this point. The yellow and the blue looks nice, but I think these clouds really set the whole thing off with the pink and the purple. And they're pretty easy to create. A little more blue there. Alright, bravery test. Here we go. Dabbing this on, allowing the 
bristles to do the work. Quickly dabbing again and again. A little more blue, a little more red. A little too light, it needs to be a bit darker. Yeah, that's better. If that seems too dark to you, not to worry, we can go back and lighten it up soon enough with some white. But we need a strong base color first so that the highlights show up. And a bigger cloud over here. These clouds do two things for us. They break up the sky a little bit more, keep things from being so uniformly horizontal, and they also create some depth in our painting and show some perspective. things get farther away from us, they're going to get smaller. So the clouds are bigger at the top and get thinner as they get to the bottom edge. Nice big billowing clouds over the ocean. This painting is inspired by a photograph that I took. About a year ago I took a wonderful visit to the Outer Banks of beautiful North Carolina where I live. Going out to the Outer Banks, we were on Cape Hatteras. I got up at 5 o'clock in the morning and walked down to the beach from my hotel where I was staying. As I got onto the beach, the wind was whipping through and the seagulls were out in just droves, diving into the waves and catching things that were brought up by the surf. As I'm standing there, I got my camera out and I waited for the sunrise and, and it was absolutely gorgeous. So this painting is from that photograph of that morning. I believe it was the second day of a four-day trip that I took. Very inspiring trip. I have painted several other paintings that were based off photographs from that very same trip to Cape Hatteras, but you know, I really like the way this one turns out. It looks pretty neat by the time I'm done with it. For those of you who don't know, I paint the paintings in their entirety first, without the voiceover, and then go back in and commentate after the fact. It just makes things more streamlined for me. I'm not good at multitasking, so talking and trying to paint at the same time is not my forte. Okay, a little more of the titanium white. Touch of the purple there. And we're just gonna blend here, gently softening these colors. Nothing too harsh. I'm not worried about making anything photorealistic by any means. I want the impression of the image. So as you're painting along, or if you have a photograph that you're painting from yourself, my advice to you is look at the basic shapes and the basic colors. Focus on those. Try to ignore the little tiny details and this little part or that little part. Look at the overall image. Try to stay very global in the way you're thinking about it. Don't get caught up in the specific details. Try to look at the movement of the color. Look for, again, broad shapes, basic colors. Simplify as much as possible. I'm not really painting a lot of detail into this painting. I'm just trying to get the colors to be accurate and the shapes to be right. If I get those two things to happen, well, then the painting should look pretty effective. couple dabs here and there. Let's make some nice pink. Not a color I create often, so it's kind of exciting to create it. Very easy to do. Red and white, of course. Just tapping here on the left-hand edge of these clouds and down at the base of them as well. Shimmering pink. It's actually this pink color that inspired me to paint this painting, which is so lovely with these soft morning pastel colors. Going back through my photographs, looking for something to paint, I 
happened on this image and I immediately knew it was the one I was going to create today entirely based on those pinks. Lots of pink over here. Again, you can see I'm just dabbing. Let's get some more definition. A little more red here, a little darker, more bold. And in a few spots up here at the top, I'll increase the intensity a little bit. Yeah, that's looking great. Remember that painting should be fun. It should be relaxing and enjoyable. You never want to fuss too much over any one section. Keep your brushwork light and active. Try not to get bogged down in any one section of your canvas. Keep it moving and you'll get much better paintings that way. Here is some white and light blue. Just gonna fix this edge here just a little bit. Try to straighten this line. And if I get it off too much, I can go back and adjust things. Okay, let's pick some more of the gray mix. Titanium white, cobalt blue, and Mars black. Blend those together. More of the blue there. And we'll just straighten this top edge of the farthest point of our ocean. Nice charcoal gray color there, a little darker, and it contrasts nicely with the lighter blue on the left. Good to have a little variation in your color palette. Again, trying to make that as straight as possible. Okay, titanium white and cobalt blue. Nice light blue. Not too light though. And I think I have a touch of the black there on my brush, if I'm being honest. And we're just gonna fill in that one gap. Missed a spot on the right hand side. And with that, the sky is basically finished. Fixing this one slice of the water back there. There, that's better. Bring some of this charcoal gray color into the foreground here. This is going to be the underside of some of these waves that are crashing over. can't see the light without having some dark there on the canvas. And this front edge of the waves comes all the way down to the actual left hand side. Here is some white and some blue. Fill in this bottom left hand side. The water reaches all the way to the bottom of the picture and therefore it reaches all the way to the bottom of our canvas. Now that you have the contrast of the darker gray, it makes the lighter colors pop a little more. Of course, we're gonna go back in with some pure titanium white in a minute and bring in all the wonderful splashing highlights of the rolling waves, but you need your base colors first. I basically, I'm working with three base colors. I have the darkest blue, I have a lighter blue gray, and I have the darker charcoalish gray. trying to get this edge to bend correctly of this beach. Let's take some raw umber and the titanium white, speaking of the beach, and let's create a nice brownish color for the sand. I might even sneak in a little bit of the cadmium yellow medium into that mixture, give it a slightly yellow cast, but first we'll just start with a nice brown layer 
Again, that's raw umber mixed with some white. Here we go, a little bit of the yellow. Just a touch, mind you. We don't want bright yellow sand. On the right hand side over here, we're gonna have it be darker and it'll get lighter, more white, as it gets closer to the actual water. A little more of the raw umber here. Mixing that together. You'll notice that I'm just using a piece of cardboard as my palette to mix all my colors. So that way you can see the color mixing more cleanly by having a uniform background to compare it to. Back to the brown here, just filling in this entire layer of the beach. Lots of sand in this picture. Quick horizontal brushwork, scrubbing it back and forth. And we'll fill it in like so. Just six colors, yellow, red, blue, white, black, and brown. You can create some absolutely amazing pieces of art. Don't need to buy every color in the universe, you can always mix them together yourself. Okay, and we have our beach. Let's get some pure raw umber with a clean brush. That's just pure umber. Taking the edge of it, a line of darker sand over here. Now that is very dark and doesn't look quite right yet, but it will in a minute. I'm just trying to figure out the angles here of how I want it to come down and around and where I want it to disappear. Perfect. Some of the raw umber and a bit of the Mars black. Nice, really dark color here. And back to my mixture of raw umber and titanium white. Got a little overzealous with this darker color. Fix that at the top edge there. A little more white here. Increase the contrast. Dirty brush, more white. Lighten the sand up through here. I love flat wash brushes because they're so moppy. It's very easy to just smear color across and blend things so nicely. Wonderful brush to use for paintings like this that are nice and soft and atmospheric.
kind of smooth out and clean up this edge here. Okay, and let's blend out using a dirty brush this darker section. I don't want a sharp line there. It is a shadow color, so we're going to blend that out and I make a couple of adjustments like that. Much better. And that shadow color is just underneath the thinnest layer of water that is rolling up onto the beach, and it's the damp sand from the waves. Okay, back to my Mars Black mix with the umber and the black. Really dark sand over here, maybe a rock. I'm going to leave it rather undefined, I think. Back to my light brown mix, raw umber and titanium white along the edge of the water here, some darker sections. Now I'll mix together some titanium white and the cobalt blue. Again, this is the sky color, and that's because the water is going to reflect the sky. And we're going to put in the very front edge of the water here, lapping up onto the shore. And it's going to mix with the brown, and that's okay. A little more blue. We want that to show up as water. Quick horizontal brush strokes. A little more white. And there's the water just hitting the front edge. A little more white. Touch more of the cobalt blue after that. Need it to read more blue. That's looking better. A little too blue. We can blend that out. And just like that, we have the water above the sand, and it looks really nice. You need the brown under you need the brown underneath to kind of show through in spots, but overall, I think it looks rather effective. And having that darker brown line there helps to reinforce the illusion of the water above the sand. A little more white. There, that's better. Okay, into the titanium white, pure titanium white. Maybe there's a touch of the blue, but mostly white. I really want this to be pretty white. We're gonna tap here, allow the bristles to play. Be very active, pressing in. I'm gonna start to bring in the actual surf now. And all those wonderful little things are just happening by just pressing the brush. Nothing fancy. Pulling down here, figuring out my angles and just trying to follow them.
Each of these lines should be converging at some point. I think putting in the waves is my favorite part of the painting. Brushing that flat at the back there. A little more white over here. Back into my darker mixture of gray, blue, and white. A little bit of the black as well. This is going to be a nice dark charcoal color here, gray. And we're going to bring that in along this line for contrast. Again, the light will show up better if there's dark that you can contrast against it. And if that happens, you can simply take a napkin, scrape it off, and then cover it up with more white. No big deal. A little more white. Clean brush. Tapping here. A little more white up the top here, horizontal motion. Just bringing out a few highlights. Back to my darker mixture, and now back to the titanium white. Nearly done with this painting, almost there. Touch more of the gray mix. And a little more titanium white here at the front. Okay, taking some of that remaining titanium white on my brush, we're going to just make this a little bit lighter. Blend that out, and I think we'll call that a finished painting. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and learned something along the way. There'll be more painting videos each week, so please subscribe.